Okay, so back in the office after a little workout, taking care of an errand, and uh, posting a little talk through that I put on Rumble earlier. Um, and now I've got, I don't have coffee today. Big bidon shi juji. I don't know if that's visible. Juji, juji, 11. I don't know. Hmm? Juji shirui. That means vitamin, 11 vitamins. So what this really is, is like one of those taurine, caffeine sort of, you know, nicotinamide energy drinks. And apparently it's like trying to pretend to be healthy um, with like 11 vitamins in it. Yeah. yeah. I like that's going to convince me of this. Anyway, what do we have here? I've got a little update thing. Um, so I'm going to update this. Come on. Hurry the time zone thing I never did actually uh, fix entirely, so that's what I'm going to look at first here. Oh, crap. Yeah. Chromium sandbox, whatever. Once you see in detail how browser extensions work, you will be terrified come on which is why in the like eternity kind of uh, crypto world you know we have a pretty like a, a very highly functional wallet called uh, superhero there's a browser extension and what it can do is really nice it's actually it's not bad to work with as a is someone calling it I would not want to work inside of that code it's, it's one of those like NPM nightmares. Um, but um, the thing is, a, as a user, what it can do is, is really cool. Like I, I like I like the way that that's kind of come out. Um, but uh, it's one of those things where it is a browser extension, um, like MetaMask and all these other things like that. And once you learn how browser extensions work <clears throat> and how kind of shifty the environment is itself, um, you you should do retail transactions with that kind of a wallet, but then don't do like, like don't manage your main business account from there. I wouldn't recommend that, especially if you, have, if you do have that. Okay, if you do use the browser extension, if you use Superhero browser extension as your main wallet, um, don't have any other extensions installed in that browser. Like try to, try your best to isolate that problem and then don't browse like sites that you don't already know really well. Like don't browse any sites that have ads with that browser, like that kind, that kind of thing. Um, or disable, even disabling, I don't know. Um, you can do, so I need to write a, uh, I should write a, a desktop wallet that can do all the basic functionality that you need from a wallet that just runs like through ZX or something, um, or from Vapor because Vapor Windows. Yeah, we can make it work on Windows now because we have every single cryptographic library, all of them. We've rewritten all of them. Uh, we both have the NIST. We have the, the C library code. We have JavaScript implementations that are unique now, with the exception of, uh, Libsodium, um, that one's still the original Libsodium. We've rewritten everything else um, just to make sure that we understood it fully. And we've got native implementations in Erlang of every single one of these that we fully understand exactly what's happening. So yeah, we could do that all on Win. So we do the Windows web or native and it, it'll all work. So I could write a more secure desktop wallet that runs through ZX and takes care of everything. So anyway, um, Pull this stuff in. What did we do the other day? We updated something in vanilla the other day. So what was the current version now? So it's 4.1. This project, which vanilla? 
B3. Ah, okay. Um, one. Uh, you see, tells us the same. Okay. All that's the same, huh? So, uh, I'm just going to upgrade to the new vanilla. I forget, we added a function to it that it could do something better now than it did before. I don't know, whatever. I don't want to be on the old one because it, it works for page, obviously, but I just really be with a new one. So, over here. Uh, 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 that looks pretty good. So, I got to remember that, like, over on, like, this side of the screen, it was like, make your, make your face bigger. So, I made a face bigger, but, um, then you'll have to excuse him. <coughs> excuse me. Like that. Um, coughing a little bit still. Uh, go for a run, still not gone. Whatever. Oh, yeah, that tastes like science. Oh. What's the thing? I am the science. Like, Fauci. I am the science. So, um, you know, that. Thank you, Fauci. This is Fauci's use. It tastes like different, definitely of laboratory origin. Mm, probably gonna get myself COVID with that. Anyway, so over here, you guys can't see that top bit. I could split the screen to remind myself. I don't usually code in that bit. I like read over here. Um, okay, that's easy. Page chain ledger. What was the? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Include. What was the one? Shop. So shop is the one that's going to carry the time zones. So um. It's a time offset, and in the uh, client. Where's the one? No, this, this one. We're gonna make a new business. <clears throat> the user used to have a time zone, which we're getting, let me make sure I got rid of it. I think I did. Yes, okay, cool. So, the shop's not got a time zone. The time zone offset. Where do I define that? I don't recall. Ah, right, okay. So. Do I care? What? was that from okay um so in priv in the midwit directory i think it's sign mess um we had a time thing Uh, date? Okay, not that one. Actually, it'll be easier if I just go find it. Grab. Grab. No. Maybe I have timestamp in here. Sign mess two. Okay. So in so, so it was in there. Um. Ts let ts. 
Oh, right, right, right. Okay, so this is the document. That, okay, so what's happening here is that um, I've got a page that goes out to um, when you sign, when you log in. When you log in, there's a page that talks to Superhero, and Superhero is the wallet, right? So it Superhero says, this is my public key, and it goes, okay, I see your public key, and then sign this blob of junk with that key and then give me all that so that it passes it back to the server and the server verifies can verify that signature against the public key cool um in addition to doing that it also passes back the timestamp that the um the the script in the page asks the browser for a timestamp and what that does is it gives me some idea on the back on the back end what that user's time offset from GMT is, or what, what the browser thinks it is at least, which is 99% of the time, whatever the system thinks it is. So um, so that's what's happening in this, is like in the signature routine, I'm trying to get a time zone offset so that I can do things like, um, like in Agora, when you have like users that write messages to each other, there's like timestamps on those messages, but those timestamps are like relative to GMT or Japan time or whatever, right? But it's not relative to that user. Um, so to show them like the t how long, how much time has elapsed since that last message, to show them timestamps that make sense for them, I have to adjust those timestamps by their time off by their time zone offset. And I don't know what that is, and every time they log in, it might be a little bit different. So. In the Agora case, like I pulled this code from Agora. Um, in the Agora case, uh, we are getting that time every time they log in. Um, every time they log in, we just take a, a new timestamp from them and say, "Okay, well that's his time offset." Is what whatever time his browser thinks it is. <laughs> and then we form all the pages and stuff based on that that time offset for that session. Um, so that's what's happening here. So the and TS is a hidden element. So I'm grabbing that element by reference, and then I'm going to use it like later. Um, so TS value later, one line later. So timestamp is get the timestamp element. The value of it becomes new. This is what it was. New date get time zone offset minus sixty. Oh, times minus sixty. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's right. The time zone offsets in JavaScript go the wrong direction. I have no idea why they go the wrong direction. And I think they're in minutes, not seconds, which is weird. Um, so what this is doing is multiplying by 60 is converting it from minutes to seconds which is what we need on the airline side because everything in airline is actually like nanoseconds and then we convert that you know to micros microseconds and nanoseconds are like the, the typical measurement size for anything in airline is nanoseconds and microseconds nanoseconds is like the most fundamental one um but you don't usually need nanoseconds um the minus 60 thing would be like normally you would take that and then you'd want the negative of it the inverse so you would multiply the that new thing by negative one and i just crunched it down to multiplied by negative 60. um and that gives you the offset that you would expect to be able to use somewhere else um inside of of our system uh so that's what was happening there the um this, what is this? One, two, three, two, three, one, two, three. So we're at a billionth, which is going to give us the time zone offset in what? Microseconds? Milliseconds? No, nanoseconds. I think that's right. Yeah. So we can test that theory. Um, so open up Erlang. Um, what is it? Erlang system 
time seconds. No Ah, it's it's a weird it it's millisecond. So seconds. Oop. I'm, I'm silly. Okay, seconds. Millisecond. Which is weird. Um I think it's nanosecond. Yeah, okay. And microsecond. Ah this brings up the question though. Does second work? Ooh, it does. So you don't have to do so seconds. Uh, now I'm curious. Okay, I gotta check the docs now because I always remember it being seconds. And then they did they like reworked the whole time system. And I think that that what must have happened is probably seconds was like the old one that you could like we didn't use very often. Um and then we we had this thing that was just like uh now which is probably gone already no it still exists okay so now is a thing that would give you this is called an airline timestamp and it's got it's broken up into components but basically this goes down to um nanoseconds and wow okay or i'm sorry no this this one's microseconds um, now gives you a microsecond timestamp it's broke broken up by periods and what probably happens, I'm guessing, what probably happened was, because if we like, look at your second and then now, um, this is your seconds thing, and then this was our microseconds. So it was like breaks of like, you know, sections like that. The uh, seconds. Is probably considered legacy just like now is considered a legacy thing a legacy function so now is deprecated and i bet seconds is also and they've gone with a singular second millisecond microsecond nanosecond probably so yeah that's interesting so and I'm, I'm curious now like if, if i go check the docs so this is like the airline docs um I think it's in kernel. That's where the yeah, main module's at. Oh, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. I'm consistent application. Yeah, so system timestamp. This is by far the biggest module in the whole language. Actually, Everything in this module isn't even necessarily in this module. Some of these like define auto imported bifs and whatever that you would never qualify. Anyway, system time one. That's what I'm. Time unit. Or a deprecated time unit. What's a deprecated time unit? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. So these are actually deprecated now. That's what I was stubbing my toe on. Because I had always remembered it was seconds. And then... And I can't see when this was added. Ah, usually, most things that are in the... Like, documentation has gotten better in the last couple of years where um, when things get deprecated, you can usually... there's Like, if it's a function that gets deprecated, on the side it'll say, like, this has been deprecated since whenever. Um... Anyway, I see what they, they simplified this basically. They, they took it down to singulars and the singulars removed the stupid little brackets in there, that, or the underscores of the end. Cool, okay, whatever. So yeah, this makes sense. Um, so actually cool. Speaking of which, I wonder about this too. Um, the, in the in a video that, that I did earlier, um, a Japanese number came up, uh, Sanbyaku Mam, and then Isen Mam, and Mam means ten thousand. So like in Japanese counting, um, we count in periods of four instead of three. So you go like tens, or ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and then we do one ten thousands, 
ten ten thousands, hundred ten thousands, you know, the thousand ten thousands, and then we have ten thousand ten thousands or whatever. So, um, what I'm curious about is, can I write a number like that? Like, I know I can do this, a hundred thousand. Okay, like textually, it will let me do that, so I can break up. So, like in this code here, where I had like this giant thing, and I, and I counted it out verbally. Um, nowadays, you can do this which the text uh, highlighter doesn't understand. I can do that to like make myself know that's a billion, which is cool. So see, that's it's nice. Like you can break it up by periods, right? But what if I'm doing like a Japanese accounting application and I want to remember that I'm shifting something by a certain amount. Can I do like Juma? Yes, I can. Okay. So that means the actual rule okay so that means the rule is you can just drop underscores in the middle of a number to break things up like however you want and it doesn't care it's just going to wipe them out whenever it reads it okay um i haven't messed with that so that that's a neat that's deep that you can do that. That also deconflict some annoyances for my kids. Anyway, in the context of this system, let's see if we can conform to the uh, page timestamp is indeed nanoseconds is why we're converting that to nanoseconds. So the thing that I would want to know so converting a time zone offset so for example this is Japan. So what? Okay, well, I need to look at the calendar module real quick. The thing is, you can get like timestamps. You can convert from uh, some number of seconds to um, a given time zone offset. So you can start with like a timestamp, and then you can say, convert this to GMT plus or minus whatever offset, and it'll do the thing for you to to get you the right number. Um, and I just got to iron out how I want to call that be because let me explain my goal here. So, all right, I've got this problem where um, I got two problems. Shops could be anywhere, right? This is like the internet, who knows? And, and I'm writing a payment system for a blockchain. Uh, so this is a this is a point of sale system that you can log into with a public key to create everything like from the start and then you can use you can log in to this site which is a really really simple site and just put in like how much you want to charge a customer in ae or you can put in how much you want to charge a customer in the local currency, it'll give you what the A probably is, and then you decide if you like that or not. But it'll tell you what the rate, the rate is that it used. Um, and it'll have a QR code. It'll generate a QR code that pays to your business's account with a serial number that you know that it can see, whatever the amount is that it helps you generate, and then. The user uses their phone and they go, you know, they point superhero at it and it looks at the picture and it sends, then it can, they can send the payment to you. Um, so then after that payment comes through and they go, yeah, I got paid. What they want to see is um, when did they create the transaction and when was it complete? Or when did they create the transaction and then um, when did they cancel it and then it came in anyway and then they do a refund we've got 
these events that happened. And we're going to timestamp those events, obviously. Um, but they need to see when that sequence of events happened. And um, if we just show, I mean, if we show them time in GMT, it's kind of like, they're going to think that's weird because they're going to wonder, why don't you show it to me in my time? So uh, we can get their time. And their time is also significant for accounting purposes relative to them because the difference between days and you know from one month to the next could be a significant moment for them and, and other things so the way that we break up their uh <clears throat> when we move data from being the active days data to be or actually i've chosen that i'm just going to do a sliding window i'm not going to do today's data i'm going to do like a sliding window and every like every so often i'm going to uh if we haven't checked a certain account for X number of minutes, the next time that we do check that account, we're going to go and like cut the tail off of anything that's over 24 hours old and, and put that in archive storage. Um, so keep, keep a running window that's active for them of just their active issues, which is the stuff that's happened last 24 hours. Um, so that's on their last 24 screen. And then the archive stuff is all logged appropriately. Um, and in the archive, we need to break it up by day. Like what day did this happen? So they can pull out their daily thing, but the daily thing makes sense to them based on which shop that was at. Um, and whichever shop that's at, that each shop, I mean, two different shops might in the same business might have a different time zone. So it's gotta be broken up correctly for their accounting. So that's like, that's the whole point of this time zone saga that I'm discussing. Um, and the way that we are going to get that is instead of doing it from the login, because the browser could be wrong or the, the computer they're using could be wrong. Um, we'll have a list of time zones. We'll recommend a time zone offset that looks right for them um, by the same thing down here where we like we pull the time zone offset we'll pull a time zone offset and based on that offset we'll give them like a recommendation inside the browser um but their offset might be different so um they might they might have to pick a different one so we'll we'll try to help them pick a good offset but it might not work out so we need they need to be able to manually adjust it um, anyway, once we know times an offset, then we know how to organize the archive data and we know how to also render their screen in a way that looks correct for them, um, without doing a bunch of weird JavaScript shit. So, cause I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather, it's easier for me <clears throat> to think I need to show them things that are accurate relative to them than to try to like send them data and then mess around with like display stuff in the screen. Um, and later on, if like for JSON endpoint, um, where I'm not doing the inner, like, cause I make these crappy HTML 1.1 interfaces to, to make sure that my thing works and to do like the beta launch of stuff. Um, they're really fast, but they're not very pretty. But, uh, if I get somebody who's like a, you know, a front end web guy, he, what he's going to want is a, he's going to want my service to have, to be, well, he's going to want this back end to be like a service that he can talk to. And the most comfortable way for them to talk is over the worst serialization concept that's ever been created, which is JSON. Um, and like, whatever, it's stupid, but okay. Um, so I'll, I can serialize, but it, it's doable. It's not like a hard thing to do. Serialize this stuff to JSON, send it to them, and then let them make their page. It's even easier for them if the time zone stuff's just like handled per shop and they know that and they can just, they can build their, you know, build out their interface around whatever, you know, list of JSON objects I send them. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, blah, 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 blah. So integer.
Let me look at the calendar module. I think that the calendar module is going to expect it's in the standard library. Or is it system time to blah blah? <clears throat> okay, so how's this work? Time options offset. Okay, so options is a list of possible things. <clears throat> offset being a byte, like like a string. Okay. What happens if I do? Okay, so what's the time supposed to be? Integer? All right, let me just try this real quick. So I've got um, uh, system. Oh, I see. I see. The RFC Durka Durka. So Erlang system. That's what this means. Second. Ah, uh, okay. So this is expecting seconds. Because I guarantee if I put nanosecond, I don't and I don't tell this function it's gonna get nanoseconds, it's gonna go bonkers. Yep, so but if I do this option time designator. The hell's time designator? The character uses a time designator. Oh, okay. So that's the separator. That's the delimiter textually between the date and then the time thing. So it, it needs a character. That's one. Um, that's not what I want though. Unit of time. So I would do unit nanosecond. There we go. So this gave me a string. Right, so. Okay. Man, that gives you a whole bunch of extra detail that we don't really need. Um. So it's probably better to just do these in seconds for the actual time zone offset. So let me be real specific about that. And that means that our time zone offset, we're not going to cast it to microseconds, which means that actually now we're just doing a guarded binary to integer, <coughs> which I think I've already got even in this module somewhere. Like I had a guarded binary to integer, but I'm actually, I may have just been doing, <laughs> check shit test here. Um, whoa. Yeah. Right, so TZ offset. That's actually no, it's not just a guarded. Okay. It, I was thinking this was like a guarded um, binary to integer thing, which it kind of is. But what's actually happening here is, is converting it to zero if it's bad. Which is like a reasonable, you know, collapse of the conundrum. So, yeah, which is different from, because I've already got one that does like, by the reason, the reason it's guarded at all is because this is one of those functions where it doesn't have like an okay, okay value or error reason return value. This is just a straight up, like, if you give it a bad argument, it crashes. So, if this thing, dies and it catches error bad arg then we're going to return zero it's fine so 
So, TZ offset is acceptable as that, I guess. Um, so we're going to do it in seconds. And that means system time to RFC 3339. How does it know that I'm at plus blah blah blah? Because the system time in seconds is like literally just a number. System time to RFC 3339 is okay. That means that it's 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 giving me this return value. It's giving me this return value based on the current. Yeah, see, so like if I change this to like five. Yeah, so we're back at 19, but it's always plus 9. It's always at plus 9 because this is Japan, right? So we're 9 hours ahead of GMT. Um, and it just knows that this is the time zone that we're at. So uh, let's see if we can go to... Let's see if we can go to GMT. Um, offset. We'll try that. So... Offset zero plus zero. Okay. To system time. Okay. So let's see if we can get. Let's see if we can convert one of these timestamps. Um, from one time zone to another. So I'm going to start out with, should be an easy one to visually catch on to. As many zeros as I can do. Um, to system time and this has the same offset options right hmm? option can only be that oh okay it would have the plus at the end of it actually right so Plus, what was the, the GMT one I just did? Plus zero, zero. I'm stupid. Put a okay. period at the end. Okay, you can actually do that. Okay, so we're going to just call that A for right now. So now we're going to do calendar RFC. Uh, system time to RFC Durka Durka A. Okay. And it did actually add nine hours. Offset. Oh, in seconds. Okay. So nine hours and sixty minutes times sixty. 
seconds. <laughs> okay. So it just assumed that whatever I put in there was GMT. Okay. Where's the universal? Okay. So this is already like a part of what, what the input was. So how, how would I trick it? Maybe mm, yeah. what I was maybe I should mm, ah, nah. what I'm thinking is like maybe I should like actually just keep these timestamps in the RFC three 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 nine thing. Um, but that could get screwy. So. So it's a goal here. The goal is to show them something that's not stupid. Okay. Um, I've got their... All their events for us are nanoseconds because we don't ever want to have like two things happen in the same second and not be able to sort them. Um, which, you know, there could be time warps inside the system. It's really rare for, for this case. Um, interesting it get it gets it all right though which means that those time seconds that we're getting those are already like utc and then everything that my system is doing is adding plus giving me the right time locally it's already adding that offset just invisibly and i didn't know this happened um which actually makes this easier like way easier so i get their offset and then i don't really do any calculations i just tell the um the printer thing to give me a different offset so okay so let's test that um let's get a timestamp from like right now so uh we're gonna do now equals um mailing system time nanosecond now that's that's how we're taking a timestamp uh, in the main page module, right over here. So that's what we're doing over here. So that's our now, right now. So, um, uh, okay. Now seconds is going to be now divided by Okay, I'm gonna chop that off. So I don't have to keep typing it. Um, 
And now I'm going to do calendar system time to RFC Dirk Durka now seconds. And it's going to tell me that it's today. Yes. 10.53. Well, it was when I did that. And yeah, sure. Now I'm going to, okay, say, what if you're like a weird person and you live in, um, you know, someplace silly that's like only two, two hours ahead of GMT. It's only silly people that live there. It would give me the right time. And I'll set zero. Yeah. Okay. Timestamps demystified. Actually, this is way easier than I was worried about. So this is fucking cake. Um, all right. What I'm going to do with this then is... I'm going to get their offset in seconds. We're still going to take all of our nine, our timestamps in nanoseconds because it's like easy to. <clears throat> and it's fine grained enough that we'll always be able to sort things properly in the background. Um, and the users, they never, they don't care about like, they don't care about the nanosecond stuff. What they care about is that things show up in the order that we saw them that are, because our system's the one providing that, that particular truth. Oh man, that sounds so postmodern. We're going to show them our truth. Um, anyway, so sequence relative to us is what's going to be true. And that sequence, we want a fine-grained view on that, but they don't care about it, so it doesn't matter um, to them. So before we show them a timestamp, we're going to uh, make it pretty uh, and chop all the extra numbers off because if i do this um if i did now like let's say that we we do this the the people who live in silly places with just two two hours ahead of gmt um and we did like what was it unit nanosecond it'll show all this shit uh, you know the other you know, the other billion did the billion digits um, billionth, sorry, billionth digits will show up at the end of that. Um, wait, what's up going on here? See, this, I did offset two. That was plus two, right? And this is showing me plus zero. I put the offset argument in there. Why did that happen? I don't get that at all. It'd be funny if there's like an order that matters. It shouldn't though. No. Can I not get the right offset in nanoseconds? That's weird. What about nine? No? What if I remove that? Did I just have to spell something? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, airlining. Okay, let me. All right. I'm going to do this a little different. Um, check time. Um, unit and then off there. It's going to be. RFC Durka uh, 
system time unit and then offset offset unit Check time second. Okay. Nine times sixty. Ah, that's getting cumbersome too. So it's just gonna be um I'm trying to multiply by sixty twice. Okay, so check time second. Okay. Now, why didn't that work with um? That's weird. So this looks like it's a bug. I'll have to see if that's like actually a bug or not. But anyway, so the only offsets that are actually working for display right now. Everything actually works in the machinery, but when I try to do this display thing, it's all messed up, which is surprising. Which means that to get around that, I would have to do these time, I'd have to like feed these timestamps <coughs> with the wrong offset and then go back into the, like go through the text version of this with an offset to get back to like the rest. It's silly. Um, but that's how bugs are. They're silly. So. Okay, so that's a bug, like probably the center library that needs to get sorted. It's probably a really, really trivial, dumb thing that someone just like brain farted on. But that's good to know. Anyway, it's also good to know this is easier to build than I thought. So we convert their time to seconds and then add their offset. That'll be the function. So the function would look something like, um, um, Display time. I'll do DT and make it shorter, but it'd be a function that takes a nanosecond timestamp and then offset in seconds. And then gets the seconds. Divides that by a billion. It's seconds. Uh, system time to RFC Durka Durka. Seconds. Offset. Offset seconds. <laughs> Silly me. I just did that. I totally did that. Yep. Okay, there we go. So DT. Ah! DT. I can't type anymore because I screwed up. Um, Erlang system time. Uh, nanosecond. Um, zero. Okay, and then okay, is that the time now? 11? Yep, it is. Okay. So, okay, cool. So basically, like, I got that to work in the shell here. And so let me explain to you my process, my development process. Um, what I do is I monkey around in the shell like I just did here. To make sure that like I've got the stupid details that I will never remember. 
uh, ironed out. Because, like, I mean, I deal with the calendar module hmm, rarely. Um, I'm really glad it's there. But, what, like, when I need it. But I don't use it very often. Um, it's just not the kind of thing that I have. What's the mem? Oh, yeah, okay. So this is the... This is some core, some maternity like development note that I've got just left for myself. Doesn't matter. Um, so, regardless, I got that thing to work in the shell, which is this function, and I will flip it out like I just did, and call this um, printable time. And do this. Wait, what? what am I doing? That was weird. Oh, weird. My uh, editor was, well, my editor. This is like Kate. I don't use it like an editor editor. Uh, regardless. Anyway. That didn't help. Okay. So. I hate it when text editors try to like be nice to you. And like add tabs and stuff. It drives me freaking crazy. I don't want them to do that. Um, which is why I don't use this like my editor. Anyway, printable time. Nanosecond timestamp offset seconds. Oh, hey, look, that was the bad. That was the bad version. It had the <laughs> the typo in it. Um, I have a billion just time of Durka Durka. Yes. Yep. So cool. I can shorten this a bit. But I won't, because I like the fact that this tells me unambiguously what's happening. In fact, I'm going to change this to, to that. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um... I don't like this name, printable time. It's not printable time. It's like, it's like pretty print timestamp or something. We should call it that. P P T S. <laughs> uh, hmm. So many inappropriate jokes. So anyway, um, so cool. That's. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so the, you know what? I'm going to put, I'm going to go ahead and drop that in here, right here, because I can. And we know that should work. Uh, that also means that I have to export it. I know I'm exporting it from the main module, but like, it's kind of, it kind of fits together with that other one. Yeah, it fits together with the other one better. It really does. Um. <laughs> yep, so anyway, that's that. Actually. Oh, yeah, okay, so the thing that we don't have, I'm thinking like, okay, so then what is left to do here? Um. What is actually left to do here is two things. The time zone offset so the time zone offset that is given to us by uh, JavaScript is backwards, but we know how to like deal with it. It's giving it to us in minutes, which is silly, but that like, so. So that's all handled. What's not handled is the user needs to be able to pick their offset in a way that doesn't totally suck. And most people don't. Do people even know their offset from 
I can't make them type their offset in because they're going to like screw it up. Ooh, but I could give them like a select box. Okay, but a select box full of what? Because it's not like, like time zones are funky. They're, they're all weird. Um, do a search for time zones because I have no idea. I know I can get that from like the system somehow, but I really hate, I just hate, it's just time zones. This has been clicked before. Um, aha. Okay. Can I sort these? And, oh my god. This is horrible. UT are these ever different? What why is there a UTC versus GMT if they're always the same? Now I'm curious, like, is it ever true? Oh, you can tell the weird ones that have got, like, the, um, look at that. You can see which ones have the, uh, daylight save Eastern time. Oh, that's U.S. Eastern time. So, yeah, it's got, like, daylight savings time nonsense going on. Central Western Standard Time. is 8.45? 8.45? I'm at 9. That's close to me. There's somebody off by 15 minutes? Whoa, there's a bunch of them. Somebody's off by 15 minutes. Like, seriously. There's someone that, like, is looking at the sky going... You know, we could we could go ahead and say it's nine. Mm. But I really think uh, I think we should wait fifteen minutes. Yep. You know, it's like it's like waking up in the. So whoever did that was like, oh, all the alarm clocks in Japan went off, but I want to sleep in. And their snooze button's like 15 minutes. And then that dude's like the king of some Pacific Island. It's like the size of your like thumb. And so he can just say, all right, you know what? Our time zone, our time zone's going to move back by 15 minutes. Because I, I really need that moment to get my headspace going in the morning. Um, where is this? S Central Western State. There's a couple of them too. Look at that. 1345, 1245. 6.30, yeah, half hour. It's not as weird. Where the fuck is this? It's one of the well, it's one of the well-known names. Oh, it's well-known. Ahead of UTC by the same. Because UTC and GMT offsets are the same. This is... Australian Central Western Standard Time? Alright, now this is deserving of another web search because I'm just like... There's no way Australia is that... I mean, Australia's been really silly <laughs> to its own people the last couple of years, but... Um, What? Really? No way. That's a thing. Oh my god, that's like actually... You know, I've said, I've said before that time handling is retarded because humans are stupid. This is blowing my mind. 
normally when you think of like weird time zones, it's like, oh, India's going to be like, yeah, no, we're going to be off by 30 minutes. And everybody goes, ah, oh, well, whatever. And it's fucking India. So it's huge. And like, they have like a space program and everything. It's kind of important to be able to like interoperate with them. And in practice, when you deal with Indian companies, they don't like care. They just conform to whatever you do. So it's like actually not a big deal. But this? 15 minutes. And it's like... Eucla. What's that? You, is that where all the eucalyptus drug leaves come from? They're 15 minutes behind because they're all like, you know... Where is this place? I mean, I, I saw the map thing where it is, but like, what's there? Uh, map of Euclid. Was that spelled right? U Euclid, yeah. Western, oh, there's tourism. Trip advisor for tour. Okay, I've got to see this. Oh, look, there's Eucla, and then there's old Eucla. And then there's a Eucla jetty. We must be zoomed way in. If the, Oh, yeah, it's two kilometers. So that's like... That's just like a morning jog from Eucla to old Eucla. Beware unfenced road sign. What does that mean? We Wee booby cave? Oh, he's just a wee booby. I'm getting completely distracted. I'm supposed to be solving a time zone problem, but this is so... Border Village. Lularbur Nymph? There's nymphs. Australia's not really known for whatever. Um, Wilson Bluff. Beware unfenced road sign. Are there... There's an airport here. I thought that was like an asterisk, like, you know, like, come see whatever's here. Trying to draw my attention. But that's actually like runways. Look at that. So somebody has like technology, like engines and they don't have any buildings, though. Except for the telegraph station. Man, that's in a jetty. This map is more desolate than like a freaking beta release of a new map for DayZ. RFDS airstrip. RFDS airstrip. I'm sorry, that's also called the highway. The IR highway. Eerie. IR. I don't know how they would say it. Australians say some weird stuff when you ask them to pronounce things. RFDS airstrip. Like, I, I guess you could, sh can you just count on nobody ever driving down that? I mean, that's a nice long straightaway right there. It looks like there's no, it's right on the contour line. So it's not changing elevation like at all. What is an, a beware unfenced road sign? Sure you are. You just want my money. Beware unfenced road sign is a parking lot in Western Australia. Beware unfenced road sign is situated nearby to the... Thank you, computer-generated junk. What is that? What is beware unfenced... Like, why? I don't give a, what's the wee booby cave? Das ist der teuerste Fehler. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wee booby cave is a scenic viewpoint and wouldn't it be a cave? 
Dude, this is like I could go down a whole hole trying to find out about this place because it's so weird. Yeah, you can have cookies. Stupid. You club. There's like nothing here. Map of Eucla Hotels. You mean map of a hotel, a, a hotel. Holy shit. So the next hotel is like over here. So basically the map of the hotel in South Central Australia. Wow. Guests, one room, two adults. What's that mean? Oh, you can. Oh, that's like a selector thing. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Ooh, satellite map. Holy shit. Okay, I gotta blow this up because this is like. This is. I know this is goofy, but it's. Can you go away? Thanks. Um. Oh, it's a dirt airstrip. That's the big guy runway. And then you've got your little... Yeah, okay. It must be windy out there if they have, like, multi-direction for, for small craft. And that makes more sense now why this would be considered the, the air... Or an available airstrip. Which they have actually marked, it looks like. Wow. Yeah, this place is <laughs> desolate. Um, it looks like it'd be a nice drive, though, actually. If you're into that kind of thing. Look at this. <laughs> this place is crazy. That'd be a fun drive. Like, I bet it'd be interesting to just, like, take a weird trip out there. Oh, it's chilly today, huh? If that's today. Um, not cold, just nice. Red Rocks Point. It looks all white. Oh, there we go. Wow, that's some serious beach. So isn't this Australia? So just like if you get in the water, you just get eaten by a shark. Are these lines from different mapping efforts, or they've like, did someone try to do agriculture here and it got all weird? Cockle Biddy, dude, that's like Weebleby Cave. These have got the best names, Cockle Biddy. How can okay? How can I make a module name in this project called Cockle Biddy? Cockle. I'm gonna take a note of that because it's important. Oh. Okay. To do Uncle Biddy. Something. But I'm I need a cockle biddy function. This is great. Cockle biddy. I could never have come up with like British descended peoples always come up with the weirdest names. Except for Americans, who this is a talent that they just don't have. The hell is that? Oh, okay. Man, it looks weird from the air. Looks like a like an old TV, like with the painters, or a, I don't know. That looks like some art that you would put into like an indie video game. Is whatever the hell this is. This looks like a feed station that's just been, like they got cows out here or something. Who knows? Who knows? It's Australia. Anyway, that was not the point of this uh, little exploration. What I wanted to find was a list like this. And I guess I can create a list 
and just go down it and add all the weird ones in because it's pretty easy like <coughs> minus 12 okay is there anybody who claims to be plus 12 like that's the kind of question i want to know does anyone claim to be evidently so plus wow it goes up to plus 13 like you should just be on the You should just be on the other day. Chatham. Chatham. Chatham Daylight. Oh, so there's two of these. Chatham Standard Time. What's the reasoning behind that? Why would you not just be on the other day? Like, Chatham Standard Time's use, Chatham Islands, New Zealand. Located in South Pacific Ocean. Oh, that's unofficial. Australian Central Western Time. One of only three time zones, the 45 minute offset from UTC, others being Nepal. Oh, yeah, yeah Nepal. Blah. Forgot about that. Like, even more stubborn than India. We gotta go with that. Okay. Time the Chatham Islands is legal uh, legislated as being forty five minutes ahead of the New Zealand time by sections three and four of the Time Act. The Time Act. We're gonna regulate time of nineteen seventy four. That reminds me of the um uh brilliant British comedian, I forget her name, um who does this like ridiculous character where she pretends to be stupid and she did uh i'm describing this all wrong i don't even know how to wilhelmina wilhelmina kunk sketch about time and she goes and interviews like somebody at like the greenwich i mean like the greenwich clock station museum or whatever it is and um it's super funny if Look up Wilhelmina Kunk on like YouTube and look for the the one about time. It's brilliant. Anyway, all right. So b -b 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 enough screwing around with this. Let's see if one if I can get a concise. I don't want that. I'm like a list of time zones. I'm dumb. Who oh, off the internet? I could just be like list of time zones. And maybe I could find one that's organized. Timezonedb.com. The rescue. Okay, but it's all in the fucking order that I don't want. I don't want to write a thing to like parse through all these. I could. I just don't. The thing is, I will shortly. If ah, oh, there's so many. Um. Maybe we'll, Wikipedia's got. One. There we go. List of UTC offsets. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay. What's the asterisk for here? Huh? UTC nine thirty. Huh? V and then there's a dagger. Look at that. There's like a dagger shape on it. I know that's one of those little like, we're not going to use an asterisk, but whatever kind of shapes, but it looks like a little dagger. It's cute. V dagger. How do I do that? Yeah. Um. Okay. Can I just copy paste this? No. Yes. Okay. 
Let's see if this actually works. Because I might be able to. Cockle bitty. Okay. Cool. So. Is that a standard minus? I don't think it is. See, it's not trying to help me, Kate. Stop trying to help me, Kate. Sounds like I'm mad at some lady. Yeah, yeah, I knew it. That's not actually... Oh, and of course, it's got the little cute... Plus, minus the... Right, so this has got the full, like, UTF-8, the long, whatever it's called. Uh, okay. Yeah, so Y, X, W... What can I do with this? Okay, what I can do with this is actually I can make this into a new file. And we'll make sure the comma is a real comma. Okay, that's it. How many of these do we kind of have tracking this program? Not that many. Okay. So I think what's supposed to happen here, Kiribati in the Phoenix Islands. Wow. That's not, that's not a place you hear about every day. Um, okay. Good old Tonga. Kaboom! gigantic volcano anyway okay so i can use these as a basis for um doing stuff i wonder what this actually prints out to like in terms of yeah i knew it see it's using one of those funky high High Unicode value thingies. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to parse this. And just put them in. Okay, so what I don't want is the ends of this, right? So if I cut that at the comma. Actually, I could do this with like a text, a text thing. But I'm just going to play with this real quick. See if I can make it like not stupid. Um, put it in here and just play with it. Uh... U UTC UTC offsets. It looks like University of Texas cough sets, which makes me think of football and the like. Turn your head and cough, please, sir. Which I've not had to do for years. Anyway, let's see here. So, if I want to play with this with our cough sets. <laughs> Gonna play with your cough set and your cockle bitty. It's gonna be outrageous. Um, okay, so uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna get um, bytes, file read, UPC offsets text. Oh, I'm stupid. I want read file okay and now i want um unicode characters to list okay let's see i'm just curious if we can get this to show me what i Yes, we can. Oh, beautiful. 
Okay, so it did work. Which means that all of our new lines are in there. So if we're going to do... Um, I could have done read line, but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, so string split. Uh, oh, I'm dumb. I want the uh, the text. I'm going to do text from those bytes. And then I'm going to do string split. I'm not going to look this up. Uh, I think that I can just tell it on new line without any length, special length. Maybe, maybe I need a list of delimiters, and then maybe I can do all. Nope. Hmm? Oh. Maybe I need that. Maybe I need a list. Oh, I'm just I'm like stabbing the dark now because I'm stupid. Oh no, that was it. Um, which means that I should have just done this. I'm dumb. Look, I could have done like a string like that. Yeah. Uh, duh. Okay, so that's all of the bits that I want there. <sighs> okay, so lines equals that. Okay, and then. How do I want to so I would want if I get in um, the offset and the offset starts with um, a U a T C whatever the fucking eight seven you know actually I should copy the I should feed because the no wait I'm dumb I've got the whole thing over here um okay so whatever the fuck this is And then these are all like the same size, and I don't care after the comma. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do um, okay, so we're going to do function. It's going to take the offset. As I was just breaking apart, U, T, C, T, C, and then um, that weird thing. So this is on the negatives. Uh, and then A, P, I'm cheating so hard. Um, A, P. Uh, or okay, I'll do H one, H two, because that's like more obvious. I'm gonna like screw this up if I get fancy. Oh, you know what? I'm dumb. It's gonna get weird to read otherwise. U, T, C. Weird thing. H1, H2. I say it's going to get weird to read. There's going to be a bunch of clauses here. Into. There's never anything after this that I care about, right? Nothing. So actually, it's going to be. Oh. Ah. 
actually, no, this is going to get done too. So fun offset and then actually let me see if I can do string split um Needs to be that way, right? String split. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna run down this list of um, lines that I got, and then uh, split from that comma at the end here. Break all this off. Just take the front part of that real quick. Um, I think that's a better thing to do. Just gonna take the front part. Yeah, see, this came out better already. Good, good, good. Oh, and they used a real plus sign, so they used a fake like my. That's ah, silliness. <clears throat> okay, so better ones. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna do uh, tuples. Actually, no, I don't want to do tuples. I want to do tuplize. It's going to be a function that takes an offset line Offset case offset of don't care what these are. I care that this is that weird whatever eight seven two two thing and then h one h two don't care h one n two. In that case, I want the offset string is like the one thing. They want to convert the M1 to the M2. Um, so M1 times 60 times 60 plus. So we're going to convert the hours to seconds and then add that to the... Um, The minute seconds. And it's going to be we're going to wrap, we're going to do make it all negative. Um, what was the other one? It's just plus, right? H1, H2, M1, M2. Off. Oops. Offset. And then M1, M60, M60, plus M2. Wait, no, whoa, I'm dumb. Look at this. Look at this. I'm I'm being retarded. I'm I'm like completely brain farting here. 
H1, H2. These are characters, not digits. Ah, silly me. Okay, so look, at, I'm just like brain farting nonstop. This is ridiculous. So case offset. Oh. Okay, so I was, I was on the right track. 8722 and then h1 h2 thingy m1 m2 well we do want the offset here but <clears throat> we want um list to integer times 60 times 60 plus list to integer into uh, m1 m2 times 60 and then that's going to be what gets negated so dunk, dunk. i think that is right make sure i've got this closed Yep, I do. Okay. Yes. Then what was this thing? Plus H1, H2, M1, M2. Okay, and this is just lit up. List 2 into the H1, H2. I'm pretty sure I got the, I think it's list energy. I'm going to laugh if I actually wrote that wrong. That's what blows this up. M1, M2, 60. And then if it's, um, that thing there's only one that's not that way i think and it's going to be zero in that and in that Ooh, okay so top lines uh List. Oh, better lines. Ooh, I think that's actually correct. I wonder if this is like a gonna be a printable thing or if it's gonna be a No. Not bad. Oh, and then I've got an extra line at the end. It doesn't matter. Um, okay. So. You know what I should have done? Is replace that that stupid minus thing is just dumb I'm gonna spell topolize slightly differently now okay offset Change this to
Ah, there we go. Okay. So that's like... What was the... Let me get this drop last here. This is the list that I want. And it is actually in order. All right, and that's in seconds, right? Which means that that's actually a valid airline too. So I can just like copy paste that into a file and not care. Sure, okay. All right, so now I have all the stupid time zones, like every one, between the 12.45 and 5.45. Wait, do I have 8.45? Okay, I do. So, I, hey, wherever that was, Euclid, not Euclid, but whatever. The eucalyptus place in Australia, if you're on a fish time zone, you're covered. Um, I'm not going to go through the thousand and a half, like, freaking whatever codes that was that was ridiculous um but this that would mean that if i go to node and i do here wait this is like a really old node um which node am i looking at oh yeah okay so my Sim links point at some ancient version of node, and I should probably uh, change that. Node mm -hmm. version 18. It's still bin. Bin. Bin and bin. Bin, node, bin, 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 bin. Okay, so there's like symlinks to symlinks, symlinks here. Um, I forget what is this. L N S. And what happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, so targets first in the link name. So, um, L N S. Bin N P M. Needs to point to bin. Node V eighteen Dirkka bin NPM, right? Oh I need that. Hmm? Sounds like it's a naive user. Ah oh! <laughs> I looked at the docs and then I did it backwards. Like, exactly stupid. Whatever. Okay. Ta-da! Let's see. NPM now points to that NPM. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Um, NPX and RM and... Node. Yep. Okay. So, uh, Ben Node for eighteen, some shit. Uh, node, and then Node. Okay, and then same deal. NPX, NPX, right? And things should work. Okay. Whoops. Aha. Okay. Now, what was the deal that I did in this other silly? What was the silliness here? Um. New date. Get time zone offset. That's a weird thing. Like we're gonna instantiate this. Don't let it exist anywhere, and just call get time zone offset. But I guess that's how. 
JavaScript people do things. So 540 times 60. 3240. So let's take a look. Oh, times minus 60. So Japan. See, that's like my time zone offset is plus 9, right? Not minus 9. And it's giving me minus 9. Because it's like, I don't fucking have any idea why it does that. Um, but that's not the time zone offset that you would use like in any other library that I can think of. Uh, including the Erlang one. So you know, Erlang's the one that I care about. So let's see, plus 9 is... Yeah, C plus 9 is 32... 32,400. So, 32,400. Okay. So, what we can do... <coughs> is... Um, I will loop over these to create uh now i can in, i can create a time zone offset thing for um yeah i can create a time zone offset selector it's in there like the shop edit page and to populate that selector i can Loop over these time zones that I know are the like the ones that exist, as silly as they are. I've got labels on the left that are like acceptable, um, and the right side I've actually got the integer values for the seconds offset that I want. And so what I can and so these seconds offsets should match the in page the time zone offset that I can generate in that script that's inside the page. It can get the times on offset and it can try to find the one in that list that like the value that matches the one that it sees. And it can try to select that, like set that as the one that's selected for the user. And I know I can do that through a script. I don't remember exactly how to do that in the script, but I know I can do that. Um, because it will be less distracting than looking up all these ridiculous time zones and desolate parts of the world with like you know satellite imagery um that was kind of fun though um you know and then going through and like honestly kind of like it would have been faster if i just like knocked this stuff off um but it was kind of fun to like do this stupid playing around in in the in the shell and, and making making my uh my list the way I wanted. Honestly, that was just yeah, the most productive use of time. It was kind of fun. Um, as silly as it was. But now I've got my list. I put that in my program and use that as base data to generate that list. The page script can know what its offset is and then try to select the correct one. And then the user will be less perplexed. And only users who have to actually care about like what time it is really carefully or the the one percent of users whose like time settings are actually going to be wrong those people will need to go like manually select where they're at but i think for most people the vast majority of users they will never have to look at this they'll never have to pick anything in here to make their system work right and that's actually the goal um people say my interfaces are clunky that's true they're like your app doesn't have any buttons or it has one button and like two input fields and there's nothing going on. I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, but it works every time. Yes. So that is the essence of the Craig level interface is that it's allowed to look clunky because everything in the background, there's nothing to clunk is the thing. There's nothing to do. Like if everything's handled properly, the user shouldn't have to actually mess with most of this stuff. Um, if they do, it doesn't matter how good the interface is, it's going to suck to deal with the system. Um, so the goal here is that 99% of users are never going to have to touch this. And I mean, when I say user, I mean managers who are setting up shops inside of a business they work for. 99% of them should never have to touch any of this stuff. Like I'm doing all this work right now, which front loads it for them so they never have to. Um, that's the ideal. So... Hopefully, that's how things will go. Um, 
it is coming up to noon right now. I have to go do something and I'll be back. And then I'm going to put this into like a thing to do the, to do the thing. I, I'll probably be able to continue with the video. I might not be able to because um, there may be stuff going on behind me, um, which would be maxly distracting. And I'm going to want music on in that case. And if I do have music on, then I can't screen record where <coughs> I could, but I can't publish it because I will get, um, I mean, copyright strikes. I'm not monetizing anything, but I'll get like copyright strikes anyway. So that's stupid, but that's how it is. Anyway, if you happen to have any good indie music composers or game music composers or whatever who don't mind their stuff being like background music in a weird stream like this, then like that would actually be helpful because um, then I could work through distractions while still like narrating and not have an issue with stuff. Anyway, this turned out pretty good. Um, I hate dealing with time zone stuff, but at this point, it's like a completely tractable problem now. It is absolutely obvious how you can iterate over a list like this, make the label, make the value, have the script, get, I mean, we just did it here in the shell. <coughs> get this time zone offset, pick a thing, and move on. This will be simple. So that was cool. Catch you guys later.